in Dayton, Ohio. Man, it's crazy right now. It's, 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 it's real crazy. Uh, your, young, your young generation is out of control, but that's because my generation that was supposed to raise that young generation ain't raised them right. Because they was out of control. You know, they called this generation X, didn't they? Well, now what you gonna call this? <laughs> I mean, uh, now you can die out here over five dollars. You can die out here over an argument. I was watching on news, Springfield, brother died because the man broke into his car. You know what I'm saying? They got in an argument because the man telling him like, man, you gonna have to respect my space. You know, dude took him away from his space. And I mean, that's just deep. You know what I'm saying? That's just deep. The little mama walking through the hood, she was going to the store, cut through an alley, and then she gets harassed by two dudes and gets jumped. And seen a pedestrian, you know, we supposed to be pedestrian, we supposed to be city folks. She seen a pedestrian, dude told her, get your hands off my car. He didn't stop until he heard the gunshots at the, gun, at the next stop sign. I mean, it's just wild out here, man. I mean, Bush in office, I'm gonna blame it on the president. Everybody always say, well, he's just one man, but I'm gonna blame it on the president because the president is who puts all the all the people in the situations that they need to be in. You put, you know what I'm saying, you, you're president, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, you gotta look out for the economics of the blacks, you gotta look out for the economics of the white, you gotta look out for the economics of the Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, not saying that that's too much of a responsibility, but apparently somebody up in higher office ain't doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, have you seen how Dayton is now? West side of Dayton ain't the west side of Dayton no more if you ever paid any attention. Trotwood is the west side of Dayton now. Basically, um, they didn't, they're trying to clean up all of Salem, all the five oaks. They want all of you. You didn't put us in there and then put them bars and fences up and them cages up. And now you want us out. And you're moving us out. And you're tearing down the projects. And I mean, not that the projects was anything beautiful, but when you built the projects, you never, you never kept them up. You never improved them. Well, you want to black, blame black people. Well, I mean, it's just the same way with, with the white people, you know what I'm saying, when they had the white people that be, uh, as they call them, trailer park, you know what I'm saying, you don't, you, you got to take care of your business, man, you got to be responsible, and I feel like that the higher powers of being in office is not responsible. They look at us as a threat. They look at us sometimes, they get mad because they sit and, and, and rap is becoming what they call a lot of control, rap is becoming the main source of income for a black man that's out here hustling, that's trying to find a way out. And then when you find a way out, your so-called real friends that's supposed to be your friends or whatever, once you find a way out, then they mad at you. Is that fair? Is that fair to be mad because my brother made it? And I ain't saying I'm mad because, you know, he didn't put a hand back, but yeah, it's a lot of brothers out here that make it that don't put a hand back to the hood. I can respect LeBron James. LeBron James didn't come out of Dayton, he came out of Akron, but he put his hand in the hood. You know what I'm saying? He 
he out passing out turkeys. You know what I'm saying? Katrina happened. You know what I'm saying? He's all part of that movement. That's what that's what I'm talking about, man. That's that's a young black man with power. And I'm glad that he got some good people behind him to show him what to do with that power. Because when we are here in the hood and we get power, first thing we go get is some 20s, some throw, some bling bling, and we ball. And that ain't life, man. You know, what happened to the beginning morals of life? That's why I like Tupac when Tupac was alive. Tupac, you know what I'm saying? He may have been a thug like a marauder, but that was because from the beginning, he had a, he had a message, man. And he had to transform his message to thug life just so you understand him, just so that you buy the album, just so that he can become popular enough for you to hear him. And I mean, and it's kind of messed up, but a lot of the kids today, they hear his music and they still take it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand. They don't know what a Tupac was. They don't know about Tupac being in the Black Panther Party. They don't know about Tupac, you know what I'm saying, standing up for what he believed in. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they, they don't remember Dear Mama. You got kids out here don't even know what Dear Mama is. Don't remember Dear Mama or, or, or Brenda had a baby. You know what I'm saying? Or don't even understand what the what the um, the one song was he had about the police. You know, all that stuff, man, is important that we need to go back and reanalyze. If you go back and reanalyze the man, you will see that he was just trying to reach out for his people. They weren't listening to him with Tupac looks now, but they listened to him when he got to All Eyes On Me. You know, after he went to jail. You know, they, they, they look at all his trials and tribulations as, as, as that's what I got to do, you know what I'm saying, to be a rapper. That ain't what you got to do to be a rapper. That was a black man going through the struggle, man. We, and there's plenty more stories and tales of us out here going through the struggle, man. We just... We need some real leaders, and I ain't talking about Jesse Jackson, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I ain't, I ain't knocking Jesse, but we need some real leaders out here, man. We need somebody that if you're going to spit that thug, thug life or whatever, if you're going to run that thug life, run it responsible. Okay, youth violence, I believe youth violence is out of control today. Uh, you have entirely too many kids that are not being properly, properly disciplined, educated, and trained to do the things that they need to be doing. Um, and taking care of business. Uh, there's too many excuses being made for the youth of today. Uh, and if something's not done, um, it's a scary thought about what the future holds for us. When you turn around and look at our youth for youth today, there's not a lot of kids graduating out of high school anymore. Uh, there's probably more kids dropping out than there is graduating. Um, there are not a lot of kids uh, working. Um, you have more kids out there selling and using drugs, and all of that uh, promotes uh, violence. Uh, so until that, so until we we find a solution, and the only solution that is going to be, I believe that there's going to be is number one is is prayer, not just prayer for within the churches, prayer within the schools. Uh, bringing that back, these churches, these all of these churches need to get involved. Quit waiting until the youth get in trouble, and then they want to point fingers. Stop the problem before it happens. I don't know, man. It's sickening. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sick about it, man. And it's nonsense. I don't, I, don't, I don't have too much to say about it, man. I mean, I know I can't say anything much more than what anybody else said about it. You know what I mean? It's just retarded. Right now in the Valleys in Dayton, it's a bunch of bull crap. Because for one, what happened to the old days as far as like when you fight, next 10 minutes, you know, you, you're drinking with, you know, with your partner or, you know, or smoking with them, you know, whatever. And then they're like, okay, you got me this time, but I'm gonna get you the next time. I mean, that, that, that's all violence is. Um, I feel that the violence in Dayton is like it is because society has took a lot of things, you know, laws have took a lot of things from kids to where they have no choice but to act out. You know, they not getting it from home, so why not do what they do? They steal. You know, they beat up people, they killing people, and it's unnecessary. You know, stuff like that is ridiculous because the child ain't getting what they need at home, at school. They took prayer out of school, you know?
the other thing is like what she was saying. No. When, they, when, when they took our prayer out of school, and then they took paddlings out, you know, and yeah. everything else. And then the way, you know, with your neighbor, you can see you, you know, down the street, two blocks over or whatever. And as far as them, you know, stopping right then and there and whooping your butt. And once they took all that out and started talking about all the child abuse and everything else, that's what started all that stuff. No different where you was at or anything else, right. though, either. Right. You know, our neighbors used to beat our butts if we was in the wrong, you know, and we live, you know. So where all this child abuse stuff come from, I don't understand it. So we not supposed, when our child is robbing folks, we not supposed to beat that butt? It's wrong. If the child ain't hurt, it don't make no difference if they hurt or not. If they going out I mean, to rob somebody, then As long as I'm not trying to break an arm, break a leg, I feel that I have that right to whoop my child when necessary. No, I don't beat my child. I'm not throwing my kids into walls and stuff like some people doing. You can't stereotype everybody. You know, you can't say because this person did this to this child that you know, you gonna do it too. So you should be able to whoop your child and these kids not getting something at home. That's the reason why they doing what they doing. And it's not only kids, it's older people too. And the, it's just ridiculous, it really is. It's horrible. Um, from what I've heard, Dayton has a very high crime rate and um, half the time I'm scared to go out of my house. I'm actually trying to get out of Dayton because of the crime rate since I've lived here. Um, in the three years I've lived here, I've had my car stolen twice. Um, my garage was broken into, they stole my car. I had one smash by a drunk driver. Um, it just never stops. And a lot of the crime is black on black crime. Um, and I just don't understand it. I don't understand why people waste their lives away shooting each other. and. Um, you know, out there killing each other, it's crazy. My Life's too grandmother, short for that. grandfather, and uncle were all in the home. And this is how we learn about different stuff. But you don't see that now where other families, you, you know, if it ain't no male there, somebody coming in, stepping in, and trying to teach you and guide you. And then there's not enough things for these young kids to do. You don't have any more baseball fields here in Dayton, so that eliminates that. You don't have no wood shop in school, so that eliminates that. They take out all the good things, these things here that will train this child to do something when they grow up, or got big, but it doesn't have anything, nothing at all. No wood shop, what really do the young black males have to do? Really, when you think about it and you look around, all they want is what? They want what they see somebody else got. They get this. Get this fixation in their head. I can make this. This money here. They want that fast dime. They're chasing it instead of the slow nickel. Getting out there working. Striving. Nobody wants to work at my McDonald's. That's an honest job. But they don't want that. They too good for that. They don't want Burger King. They won't want anything like that. But I don't understand that either because if that is going to help you and it's honest and you can say what is wrong with that. Why are they always looking for something that they can't have? It makes no sense. I think it's horrible. Bad, very bad. What do you think is causing all the violence? Well, I think uh, the dope and kids that don't have uh, both parents and stuff like that, and most of the women raising raising the kids and stuff like that, like that. just don't have a man in the house. That's my thing. Very fucked up, right? That's all it was like that. 
knife and shit. Motherfucker had murders already. Stabbing, shooting, kidnapping, raping. It's fucked up. I'll just say that. I think it's. Uh... terrible one out and uh, I don't see any chance of for it getting better unless we look at uh, where it starts at and that's the home and the family and uh, these children they don't have no role models the role models they do have it's it's the, it's the gangsters it's the, the it's not their father because they, most of them don't have a father and it's uh, you know the foundation is a start it's the family and i feel like you know us as the us we just make it uh we, we put hollywood you know as our role models or sports people and they are just people you know they're not role models and you know we need to have our role models in our home and that's our mother and our father i think it's crazy i mean i, I think it's real unnecessary but at the same time time is hard there ain't no jobs there ain't nothing for people to do so all they got to do is just get in the street and act the fool and when you act the fool that's when violent and crazy stuff happen. But I think that's just the times we're living in. There's way too much of it. And I don't know where it's starting from, but it needs to be. I think some of it has to do with the school, some of the parents. It's I think it's starting at home, but it's it's getting out of hand to the point where I think kids aren't even going to school and that's just like Domino effect and right to just you know being out of school and just trying to find stuff to do and it's the wrong stuff and then just getting themselves in trouble. I think the situation is getting way out of hand. It's crazy out here. I mean, most of the crimes are committed by people who are like 14 to 35 maybe, and most of it is just senseless acts of violence. These kids are just going crazy. They don't they don't have any emotional feelings about anything. Their emotions have been lost. They're, they don't care if they have to take somebody's life. They don't care about the repercussions of stealing stuff to get what they want and need in life. It's, it's just a bad situation. I feel sorry for these kids and the parents, store owners, and relatives of people who, who get killed. It's crazy out here. I mean, if the way that I look at it, it's all serving the purpose of the same people who wanted it a long time ago. They getting it now. A lot of motherfucking shit that happened to where our kids became their kids, as far as the way they treat their parents, it had all happened when they grow up. If a kid don't see their mama but two or three times in their life, from the time they like six and seven, they see their mom two, three times a day. When they grow up, they're not gonna listen to their mom. And that's how the city wanted, because we pay for a whole lot of stuff the city don't want to pay for. Free labor, prison systems that we fill up and they get paid for. Look at Kettering and then look at here. It's all the same American dollar, but look at the city system. They want the city violent so that people don't have nothing else to think about. Fear make money all the time, every time. As long as they keep dating a violent place, they keep money in their pocket. It's up to us to not fall for the shit that we've been falling for forever. That's how I feel about it. Violence serve a purpose if you the one that wants shit done through violence. If you don't want violence on your streets, then you gotta stop falling for the bullshit. Stop getting your welfare check, buying rims, knowing on the 15th you ain't gonna have shit to eat. Quit buying your kids Jordans. You got five kids, y'all all got Jordans, but y'all riding the bus. You just missed two pay payments on the car. We do shit to make shit that they want to happen, happen. So I don't blame violence on nobody but us, for real. Terrible, really. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, to, to be for real about it, it's terrible. You know, but it's just the way it is. You know what I mean? And it took a whole movement to change that. You know, it just it's just not. It's hard to just start with one person because one person is not going to have an effect on you know enough people. You got to affect a hundred, a, a thousand people. I mean, for it to take place, it's gotta, it's gotta be a whole different change of an attitude out here. And right now, I don't see it, I don't see it happening. It's like the forces that keep it going are mainstream, and the forces against that are underground. It's like, you know, not really paid attention, it's not really respected. 
I mean, it's crazy, man. It's it's getting totally out of control. I mean, you got these kids out here that definitely don't care about each other. They don't care about hurting the elderly or each other. Or their parents, they don't respect their parents. They don't respect teachers. And uh, not wrongfully, but they don't respect the police department either. I mean, it's... When you got a situation like that where people don't care anymore, then it's grave potential for violence. It's going to get hectic. It's going to get crazy. I mean, there's a lot of different things that, besides those factors that are causing the violence. You got these crooked cops out here. There's nothing being done about it. You know, and it go, also goes back to the fact that where, where you live, you're treated like a criminal. You know, in that mind state, you know, why would a child want to go to school? And, 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 and get a good education. You know, it's not like we, we give them a lot of hope of getting out of that situation. You know, what's the alternative? The alternative is to get angry and rebel. You know, it, it's, it's to get angry and rebel. You know, a lot of the parents that, that are working to support their families are working so many hours that they can't spend enough time at home with their children, you know, to, to help them with homework or, or to instill good moral values in them. And all the children see her, hey, you know, what, what is the alternative here? Um, let's see, I can get a good education and have a better education than my mom, but I'm still going to have to work 65 hours a week just to scrape by and live someplace that I don't want to live in the first place. You know, and on top of that, I'm treated no differently than my buddy here who's dealing drugs and living in a nice place. You know, I'm treated no differently by, you know, the everyday citizens, you know, that I, that I live amongst.